All right, how's it all doing, guys? I hope you're doing great. Today we have EVGA dropping their 3090 Ti prices on all series of their cards, and for the hybrid gaming, the water cool version has a $700 price drop. Now having 1,500. That's a very big drop. And if you look into the Kingpin version of that, we have. $500 decrease now the price is 2000 which is the MSRP around the MSRP of actual 3090 Ti but this one is Kingpin so good deal and if you have if you look into the 3090 Ti black gaming which is the normal one I say normal even though it's a very expensive GPU uh, having a price drop of $600 and now it's on 1400 so below the MSRP of 3090 so I don't know if 3090 will drop in price surely it will right so yeah it's a huge drop right here as you can see that the question is is it the right time to buy this because the new GPs are coming but hey if you want to go for this good sales uh, I mean it's a substantial decrease in price so I don't mind so yeah next up we have AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 series is now available finally for DIY market and the 64 core Zen 3 uh, Threadripper is around $6,500 so very expensive and well not nothing surprising it's a server based CPU anyway if you look into the benchmarks here uh, hold on so right here the 3D Mark VR Mark and Stockfish in the Stockfish, we are seeing Threadripper Pro 5995WX is winning, like all in the all in the top, and the 5975WX is also winning compared to the last generation of 3975WX. Like quite a big margin if you think about it. So, yeah, like compared to 3995, this one has a big difference. In others, well, it's gonna lose because it's physics core and, well, it's not gonna do well because it's a server based CPU, not a, you know, gaming based. So, it's gonna lose. And quite, quite terribly, as you can see, uh, Cry 9 12900K on 42,827 and uh, Treasure Pro uh, 5995 is on 29,888. So, yeah, like, it doesn't do really well. Same goes for Twitter Mark Time Spy and VR Mark. Like nothing surprising, but we don't we don't care about these. We want to see into the actual uh, well, the performance coming from the Third River Pro and gaming doesn't matter. If you look into the applications, however, multi-threaded performance. Look at that, all the way up, 1,365 and 1,224 for 5995 and 5975 respectively. Compared to the last generation, yep, it's a huge difference. Huge difference compared to the last generation, right here and this one. If you look into the single threaded performance, well, it's gonna lose. Nothing surprising. <laughs> now, if you look into the rendering benchmarks, and we have Cinnabon 23 multi core performance, Threadripper Pro 5995 is on par with the 3990X, yeah, basically, on par, but also winning against the previous generation 3995 Threadripper Pro, and the 5975 WX is also winning compared to the previous generation 3975 WX, so yeah, a huge gain, and not just small gain, huge gain, 42,000 to 54,000, very big, and Cinebunch, R23 single core will lose nothing surprising and let's look into the corona benchmark and look at the timing 15 that is the least you can go right now with the 5995WX and with the 5995WX PBO uh, 75 PBX a WX PBO we have 23 compared to the previous generation yep 28 so yeah still better Compar much better 
And if we look into the multi core performance from R20, 25,000 from 59.95 and 59.75, 20,000. Compared to the previous generation, they're all always winning, as you can see. Single core, lose. Multi core, win. <laughs> I mean, th in this in this case, 59.95 is on par with 3900, 3990x. So, yeah, I, I, we've seen this already, that the 3990X and the 5995 is going on par in most of the uh, benchmarks. And single core, lose. <laughs> Same thing. V-Ray CPU test, however, 5995WX winning by 82,760 points. And the TR93990, which is very close, 75923. Very close, still not close enough. And the uh, 5975 WX PVO is 55,000, whereas compared to the previous generation, 3975 WX, it's 44, so around 10,000 points deficit. So, yeah. C Ray, lower, so basically winning. And if you want to see more of these benchmarks, link in the description, courtesy Tom's Hardware. Next up, we have ASRock is challenging reviewers with their own A380 graphics. And if you look into the, well, performance here, as you can see here, 3D Mark 2169 on 3D Mark Time Spy. That was the Time Spy Extreme. This is Time Spy 4668 and Fire Strike 4894. And also we have the gaming benchmark here, as you can see right here. I don't know what game this is. It's on. It's Chinese, right? Yeah. CSGO 160, Dota 2 146, Apex 91. And there are two other games that I have no idea what that is. And if you look into the A380, uh, let's not look into it because I don't know what. Oh, it's Cyberpunk 2077. I can tell that. Maybe this is Forza Horizon 5? Probably. Not sure, but could be. So, so yeah, Cyberpunk 47.5 and Forza Horizon 5 63.5. That's what I can understand. Is that Red Dead Redemption 2? Can be. No idea. And that's the actual picture. Where's the picture? Uh, come on. There it is. So this is the car that we'll be getting from ASRock, if you're interested, of course. But to me, I'm not. Next up we have AMD Ryzen Pro 5000 desktop series specs leak. And the Ryzen 9 Pro 5945 is featuring 12 cores. So not 16, but 12. And as you can see, Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G, 4 core 8 threads, 3.8 base, max frequency 4 GHz, L2 2 MB and 4 MB for L3. It's gonna be DDR4 3200 and we'll be having an uh, internal uh, graphics. Ryzen 5 Pro 5645, 6 cores, 12 threads, 3.7 base and 4.6 max frequency. And again, the similar case, but L3 cache is increased by 32. Or not 32, the L3 cache is 32. And there are no uh, internal graphics. Ryzen 7 Pro 50, 5845, 3.4, 4.6 we already know the core count and yeah the similar case for Ryzen 9 Pro 5945 but the clocks are 4.7 and the base frequency is lower and probably the least 3.0 gigahertz makes sense and the cache is L2 6 megabytes and 64 megabytes for L3 again no internal graphics there's something interesting here Micron 24 gigabit per second GDR6 memory for the RTX 4060 is now in production, so we can already assume that we are getting the RTX 40 series very so soon because Micron has started their production for the 24 gigabit per second memory. And we already know that Titan Ada, which is a rumor still, will have 24 Gbps of memory speed, so it's coming with the Titan again. It's a rumor, we still don't know if it's gonna be called Titan or 4090, whatever. We still don't know anything, or 4090 Ti, that's 
possibly a thing, yeah. But still, if you look into the speed, all the other cards gonna have 21 gigabit per second, but only this, you know, rumored card will have 24 gigabit per second. So we still don't know what's gonna happen, but we we do know that 24 gigabit per second memory is coming with one of these cards, and that it will be the highest in SKU. So yeah, I'm excited. Next up, we have Intel announcing their Arc Pro A40 and A50 professional cards. They should focus on gaming, to be honest with you. Like, the condition of their cards are not too well, but hey, I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining. They're bringing their professional cards, but we still don't know the performance yet. But if you look into the, well, the spec sheet here, the peak for performance from Intel Arc Pro A40 is 3.5 teraflops per second teraflops at single precision and 4.8 for A50 XE core is gonna have eight times of ray tracing cores yep for all the oh we have also a 30 M GPU hmm, that's a mobile one which gonna have the same amount of a 40 uh, peak performance 3.5 teraflops memory 6 gigabit per second and yeah, for A50 it's gonna be 6 gigabyte again, gigabyte. Uh, for A3M it's gonna be 4 gigabytes. So my question is, if it's a professional card, don't you think it's kind of lower to have 6 gigabytes? Yeah, I don't know. But again, it's a very weak uh, professional card because if you look into the peak power for A40, it's gonna have 50 watts in a single slot form factor. 50 watts only and for the A50 is gonna have 75 and for the mobile A350 A30M sorry 35 to 50 watts so it's, it's a very weak professional card all of them but hey I mean if you are interested go for it we still don't know when it's gonna release though lastly we have Raichu the no leaker having the i9 3900k Cinnabons R23 benchmarks and if you look into it uh, we have the multi-core here as you can see 40,661 points and single core 2,288 points and I don't have the comparison so let's see if there's any comparison here I can see the Threadripper Pro 2990WX here which is 30,000 54 and I don't know what this one is. It's blurred out They don't sh he's not gonna show that as you can see it's blurred out, but I guess this is 39 3900 K. Yeah, the default frequency almost 340 to 350 watts But in the right side this one the default frequency is 250 watts. So this one this result is for 250 watts and the previous one this one is for 340 to 350 so yeah, 340 to 350 on uh, i9 3900K. So it's gonna be a power hog, that's for sure. Nothing surprising because we also saw the same scenario with 12900K. But with 250 watts, it's a substantial drop, as you can see. But single core still remains strong. Yeah. All right, that's it for today here, boys and girls. And oh, well, there's some crazy news coming in. So are you excited for? the 3900k and the of course the amd uh Threadripper pro has been released so are you gonna buy one i mean if you are probably for rendering and stuff so let me know how it goes and i'll see you next time peace